Hey man, it's the kid Vito, and I just skipped class with the progress report. Let's get it. The progress report. What's going on? It's your girl Lala Shepard. This is a new episode of Skipping Class presented by the Progress Report, and I got my man just call me Vito in the building. What's good? Man, I finally made it. Like I was telling you before we started rolling, I finally made it to the Progress Report. For sure. Nah, I'm happy. What's up? Absolutely, man. Because I know we was talking. Um, it was that last year, and you were saying how you was about to go to Africa. Facts. And Ghana, then yeah. I'm like, you know what? Well, that's gonna be so much to talk about, and then just so much, you know, stuff has happened. So it was just perfect. Facts. Timing. Facts. Facts. Perfect time. Perfect time. Perfect so let the people know who is just call me Vito. Vito stands for Victor Ends Those Opinions. I used to go by Fly Guy Vito. I mean, if people have been following, you know, my journey for a long time, I used to go by Fly Guy Vito. Um, just call me Vito was just like, man, it's, you know, I, I dropped the Fly Guy. So I was like, man, damn, how can they identify with me? So I was like, man, people already call me Vito anyway. So I was like, just, just call me Vito. For now on, just call me Vito. And we just, it's a play on words. So you know what I mean? So, got you. Yeah, fact. Got you, got fact. you. Now, I know originally you weren't born in Atlanta, but where are you Fact. from? I was born in New Orleans. I was born in New Orleans shortly after my birth, moved to New Jersey for a little bit. Oh, wow. I, yeah, I've been here since I was, what, 10 going on 11. Okay. So I've been here, like, basically all my life. Like, sure. you know what I mean? I ain't jump off the porch. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Until I got down here. So, yeah. I mean, I love the A. So, you know, this is this what I rep. You feel me? 100%. Did your, you know, parents ever tell you why y'all moved or, like? Yeah. So, like, my dad, um, he was big in, like, the education, you know, mm. education. Yeah. So he got a job with, uh, I think, New Jersey Public Schools or something like that. that makes sense. And my mom's a registered nurse. So okay. she can she can travel. Yeah, and yeah, she can yeah. move anywhere. So, Basically, like, how they tell the story is, like, you know, she took a chance on, like, just following, like, after my dad's, like, got you. Through, you know, that real love, that real black love. 100%. I and love then, it. Yeah, yeah, facts. And then she, you know, she got her job and her career off the ground up there, too. And, okay. then, you know, I mean, the rest was history. You feel Damn. Me? Now, I feel like that's such a big change from New facts. Orleans. Facts. Facts. To Jersey, oh facts, my goodness. Facts, so, facts. But that's... every, but every summer, like, mm. every holiday I was in. I was in New Orleans. Like okay. that's my home. Like, Got you know, you. every every holiday, every summer. Okay. We was at my grandma. So it was basically like I was back and back forth. And forth okay. You know what I mean? In a sense. But like like when I got to Atlanta, it was just like I was solely here. Yeah, like Atlanta this year. Yeah, shit. facts, facts, facts. For sure. So let me ask you, you know, what's your thoughts on um Atlanta as a whole now, um, versus just, you know, what you just remember early on? Um, I remember so so now I feel like it's no red clay people here. Like, you know, the original people from Atlanta. Yeah, it's I feel a few. like it's a few, but like now it's like Atlanta's kinda like black Hollywood, so everybody's migrating down here. So I feel like now like it's very rare that you'll just find a person that's literally like, Hey, I'm from Atlanta. Like right. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but now it's more so you'll find people from like New Jersey, you find people from yeah. Uh, Cali. A lot of people from Cali moving down here too, cause 100%. like the cost of living. Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I would do the same too. You know what I'm saying? For but sure. um, yeah. To answer your question, I feel like back in the day was like, man, I just Atlanta just felt like Atlanta. You get what I'm saying? Like from from the cultures, like the airbrush T-shirts, the big old Chilio making making clothes. You know what I'm saying? Going downtown, like going to the clubs and shit like that. From Club Crucial yep. to um the figure eights, the fucking Bro, um, if I'm if 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 I forgot one, just you know, oh uh, the Libra, you know what I'm saying? Just mm -hmm. like, bro, it was just Atlanta was Atlanta, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Now it just it, it just kind of doesn't feel like that, even with like the nightlife and shit like that. It don't really feel like the old a. Hey, you feel me? You feel me? So, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, and you know, I want to ask you too, like, what's your thoughts on the music scene now? Just being somebody that's you know been here and mm -hmm. just seeing the different uh, eras and things that we've had. Um. I feel like this is the first time that Atlanta di doesn't really have like a uh, like a era like a yeah, like a I feel because you you have like if you go back the crunk the crunk era futuristic um the dancing era you know yeah, what I'm saying snap. then yeah snap um and then it got to like you know I don't know what I really would call Waka Flocka's era like Waka Flocka and Travis Porter when they kind of like like merged and you know and they dropped their project they kind of had the sound too loud trap loud trap or okay fun trap fun like, trap, fun trap. Like you know what i'm saying so yeah. like i feel like now um this is the first time that i can yeah say that artists from here are adapting other sounds like because right. it's like the drill is here you know what i'm saying um they call it uh 
I think I heard they call it crash out music. So they are trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like trying to make it a make it a thing, but mm -hmm. it, it kind of sound like they adapted that from, you know, adopted that from um from Chicago. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Yeah, facts, facts. Um, now you you being an artist first and foremost, right? Mm -hmm. Um, when did that passion like? When did you discover that you you know one had a voice and that you can put you know words together? Um, so my best friend got murdered um when I was seventeen, and um I didn't really have a way to like express myself to like man to people. Like I felt like people wouldn't understand me. So what I was doing was I was literally just writing what I was feeling on paper. Um, and and we, you know, we always used to play around freestyle in school, but like I, I didn't really take music serious at first. It was my homeboy, like, you know what I'm saying? He was doing all of like the talent shows, you know what I'm saying? Everybody knew him for rapping. I was just like, this is my man. So like yeah. I'm, I'm with him, whatever he trying to do, you know, I jump on the song here and there. Um, and we had something called Fan First that we was, we was doing that in high school. But to kind of piggyback off what you said, um, my best friend got murdered right before I um, graduated, and I didn't know how to really express myself, so I started writing everything, and I was like, man, let me just put this behind a beat. Let me, you know, put this on top of For a beat. Sure. So I started doing that, and then um, I was like, man, I, I, I think I sound all right, you know what I'm saying? And I started taking it serious, and um, I just started rapping, man. That was mm -hmm. like back when, like, MySpace was a thing. Absolutely. And, um... I remember we ran into Young LA. Uh, we ran into him at like some like hole in the wall club, and my homeboy he had he was like, "Man, bro, you should do a song with LA." I was like, "Shit, I right, say less." I, I think he was performing like um, a song called "I Got It." Okay. It wasn't even ain't I wasn't even out yet. Got you. Um, I wow. think he was fucking with like Zaytoven. Got you. And um, we got his number, and he was like, "Bro," we hit him the next day. He was like, "Bro, come to Grand Hustle, bring an ounce of weed and a hundred dollars, and I do the song." Damn. <laughs> I mean, back in the day, a hundred dollars was a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know what I'm saying? And an ounce of weed, it's like, bro, I, I ain't in the trap, so it's like, I'm like, I right, bet. That's so, cool. Facts. So I, I hit up my homeboy. He was literally, literally in college. He was in class. I'm like, look, bro, I need to borrow a hundred dollars. You feel what I'm saying? Let me borrow a hundred dollars, bro. I'ma go do this feature. Mm. Bro, this man is like, I right, pull up. We went and got him. We went to the SunTrust. He got the hundred dollars out. I brought him back to school. Then me and my other partner went to Grand Hustle. We did a song with Young LA, and then, bro, I'm nigga, I'm a MySpace fucking celebrity at that point. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. We was the first person that had like a feature with LA in the city for real. Wow. And then right after that, he just popped, and it was like, I, right, I'm Fly Guy Vito now. <laughs> you feel wow. me? So, yeah, facts. That's what's up. I didn't even know that. Yeah, facts. Nah, wow. facts, facts. Damn, that's what's up, man. Um, and and just now too, with you, you know, becoming a podcaster. I love that. So talk about, I want you to talk about just, you know, the transition from not just being an artist now to being a podcaster. Mm -hmm. And as an artist, when do you know it's time to do more? Um, That's a great question. Or transition to something else. So, you know? so like, I feel like um, people would try to put you in a box if you allow them to be, in, if, if you allow them to keep you in that box. You feel me? And I feel like, man, I always knew how to articulate myself. I always new people yeah every time i talk to people it's like good vibes and stuff like that and they they pour into me they mm -hmm. tell me everything it's like bro even shit that i don't even be wanting to know like they just come to me i guess because i'm it's like a safe place mm -hmm. they know i ain't finna like you know go and tell the next person so um i was like bro like man i had gotten into a bad car accident we just got back from ghana me and nico just got back from ghana um i was at work and um this car was being chased by the police right damn Came through a four-way stop. T-bone this late. T-bone this lady. I think broke broke all her shit. Oof. And then the car literally. I'm I'm like, oh, the car getting ready to stop. I, mind you, my car was turned off. The car just kept on coming, and I seen that shit hit the curb and it flipped, and that shit fell on top of me. Like the car fell mm. on top of me. So like, I'm in the driver's driver's seat. My whole right side was destroyed. You get know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, I hit my face on the steering wheel. Boom. So like you know how you get tackled, well you a girl, but like if you play football, Girls you get tackled. Facts, 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 facts. Um, you, you get facts. Um, you get tackled and you see stars. Like that's what mm -hmm. I was. I'm like, I just knew I was. I, I knew I was about to die. You Damn. feel me? But I'm like, okay, cool. I hit my face on steering. I'm like, bet. I start feeling myself. I'm like, oh, I'm straight. I, I pushed the door open. And I tried to run, and I noticed that like when I ran, I literally just blacked out and I fell in this lady's yard. 
So um, she came out. All I can remember, she was just screaming, screaming, and I was bleeding from my face. So um, she put this little towel and shit on my face, and she called called the uh, 911. And all I can remember, I was in I was in the hospital. But to go back, um, I was out of work for a little bit. Um, and we do a show called the Veto Show, where like we have artists from around the city, they come and perform. Uh, we had just paid Cap G his mm-hmm. deposit, you know what I'm saying, to come and perform at the Veto Show, and it was like, bro, I was afraid to drive, um, and you know, like it took me a minute to drive, and I wasn't working, so we was low on funds, and I'm like, me and Nico just talking, we like, how how can we promote this show? So we had the artist booked on the show, so I'm like, man. I'm about to interview every artist that's on this show and just put it on social media, and we're gonna just co- keep on drilling it in these folks' face. Mm-hmm. The veto show, the veto show, the veto show, and um, I just started liking that shit, and that was our first packed out show, like literally wall to wall. So I'm like, this shit worked, you know what I'm saying? I looked at Nico, this shit worked, but we ain't have a name for it. Got you. So, so um, my girl, she was like, um, she was like, man, you should name it uh, Vibing with Veto. People coming to vibe with you. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I bet. So I just started interviewing folks, and, like, that shit just turned into sun. It popped. We, you know, we over 100 episodes later, yes. a year later, um, some of the biggest people, you know what I'm saying, like, came to my platform. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You was there. I was happy that you came. Absolutely. Um, and it's just like, bro, now it's now I turn myself into, like, a platform in a sense, too. So 100%. Um, and what was the last What was the last question you said? I think you said well, – I kind of, I just asked, like, you know, as an artist, mm-hmm. how do you know it's time to do more? And then I just kind of say, like, the okay. transition process. Okay, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, facts. So, yeah, that's when I, you know, that's when I kind of transitioned um, into doing that. Um, but, you know, like, the music is always going to be my first of love. Of course, of course. Um, but, you know, like, podcasting is just amazing, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Facts. I think it's perfect for you, though. I think, Thank you know, you. like you said, like, your energy is always good. Thank you. So, I feel like, you know, when you got good energy naturally it just you know makes it just easy to do a conversation so and i had a great experience there man thank you thank you thank you yeah that's that was a dope ass interview it was though absolutely yeah i want you to talk about some of your favorite moments so far though i see you had you know my capricorn brother dj screen absolutely bigger ranking ray daniels a whole bunch of people so you know what's been your favorite moment just because i know you know me doing interviews we Mm -hmm. all have favorite moments Mm -hmm. um Favorite moments, man, because I interview so many people. I'm trying to think. Um, well, an episode that's getting ready to come out. Okay. Um, like me and Michael Montana kind of like mm. squashed, squashed a, a like a. We had we didn't have beef, but it was like kind of like a misunderstanding, and that's my brother. Like you know About what I'm saying. What? It was just like we just we just stopped talking in a sense. Like, and I'm I'm gonna kind of give you like pinpoints of probably okay. what like okay. happened. I got you. But um, I feel like okay, so back to the episode like we just filmed this like a couple of days ago mm. and um i was interviewing a guy that i met through michael montana mm-hmm. um he does like uh, his name is Dwayne. he has his own rim shop mm. so we was talking about michael and i'm like man you know what i'm saying like michael that that was that's my brother like you know what i'm saying we pray together like like we we believe in god like you know what i'm saying so like me and him have a different relationship so um but it kind of been bothering me it was, it's been bothering me for the past like year that we haven't been talking yeah so we was talking about michael montana and um i was like bro call him call him you know what i'm saying call him when we was ro- it was rolling and um we got to talk and like kind of like hash out what we had and okay. we, we kind of like man it's like it's so easy like in atlanta to kind of like fall victim of like this industry thing of, easily of, or like uh shit you doing this you doing this but it's it's beef now because y'all ain't talk yep. in a sense and like like us as artists like sometimes we can get we can have people talking like you know what i'm saying so i'm glad that both of us like talked about that and kind of like you know what i'm saying Cause that's my nigga man you for know sure. what i'm saying for sure and um it's been bothering me for sure that i ain't talked to him so i would say that's one of my favorite moments like because it just it just showed that like man it's bigger than like all this bullshit what people glorify man you can literally have a conversation with somebody yeah and um agree to disagree at times but that don't mean that you got a beef you know what i'm saying like so i feel like that was a big moment um uh interviewing ray daniels like that was another big moment you know what i'm saying screen and bigger ranking and just having these people in my phone like i was i was telling nico like man I got a million dollar phone. A hundred percent. Like for sure. I got like a lot of a lot of powerful people in my phone, man. You know what I'm saying? So even if the money ain't 
ain't I don't got a million in my bank. Yeah. I know I got bro, my phone is crazy. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So those are some of my favorite moments though. But to kinda answer your question, um, about what happened, um, so I was, you know, I was uh, rocking with Scotty, and uh, we had a single, uh, me and Michael, uh, called Tell Me Why You Hatin', mm -hmm. produced by Busy, and um, we was gonna, we, we recorded it, we was getting ready to shoot the video, but um, me and Scotty decided that we wanted to go, like, another direction on a single okay. that we was gonna put out, and um, I had already paid Michael for his wardrobe, you know yeah, what I'm saying, for, for the video, but we ain't never shoot the video, and um, later, I started podcasting, I'm like, bro, come to the podcast, you know what I'm saying? I'm geek. Like, come to the podcast, bro. I love to interview you, do-do-do-do. But, like, me not understanding that it's still business. You know, it's the chain of command. Yeah. He got a manager still, so I got to holler at them, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Michael doing his shit. So yeah. I kind of took it, and I, I can I can honestly say that I kind of took it like, damn, my nigga, like, I paid you for the wardrobe, but we ain't shoot the video. You know, I don't I ain't think I had to pay you for an interview. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You my mans, but, you know what I'm saying? It was just a misunderstanding. You know what I'm saying? But... I'm glad we we hashed that. I respect that. I feel like that's real grown man business. And I fuck with Michael too. So just, you know, that's how issues should be worked out. Facts. Niggas should talk and Facts. get right. I, I mean, it's like and it be like that though, like in this industry though. Oh, like know. it's like it's like like bro, like sometimes like us as individuals, like we grown, we all growing and like learning this shit, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can admit that I ain't perfect. Like, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Sometimes I, I may do some shit that may bother another nigga that I don't know. Like, I don't know that I bothered you, but it may have came off wrong. So, like, me being on a progress report, I'm going to put this out there. Like, if I ever did something to anybody, like, in the industry, anybody, don't, you know what I mean? Like, don't look at it from, like, I'm trying to, like, do you wrong. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I probably just didn't, didn't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm growing, too. So, you know what I'm saying? I apologize, like, if That's I real. did some fuck shit to anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, because they ain't my character. You know what I'm saying? 100%, man. And Facts. Growth and accountability. Facts. 100%. Facts, and facts. we all, you know, do shit. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts, so, facts, facts. Especially when you've been in the space for so long, you know, it, it's crazy. I always say, like, 2016 was one of my favorite years for music. Mm -hmm. And it's just crazy to believe that that was eight years ago already. Like, God damn. damn. So, eight just, years. you know, just think about that growth and just shit that you did. So, of course. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Shit damn. crazy. Damn. Shit is crazy. Shit is crazy. <laughs> facts. Um, okay, so I want to transition into, you know, we was kind of talking about this off air, like your passion for wrestling and WWE oh my and God. stuff, because I thought that was cool. Like me, myself, I love sports, but I think I had really seen that you was passionate about it, just the stuff that you was posting. I'm like, yeah, yeah facts. this is cool. So, facts. so talk about that. Where did that come from? Man, as a child, man, I used to always love wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Too, that, that, that's dope. I that's did. dope. Yeah. I remember the first, um, the first gift my dad gave me, um, he had took a picture, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, it was Stone Cold Steve Austin. Okay. Okay. Stunnering him, like stun, like my dad put his face on yeah, Vince McMahon, and I still have that to this day. Mm. And I was like, bro, like that was like so cool. I'm like, dad, like you getting stunned by Stone Cold? I didn't, I didn't know how to differentiate the two. Of course. Um, but at the time, I was watching WWF, um, WCW. I was, I was, I was in on Nitro, but I was more so like Monday Night Raw. Yeah. You feel me? So, um, but yeah, since I was a child, man, me and my brother, we used to, um, man, we used to beg my dad and my mom to like, mm. you know do the uh rent the uh the pay-per-views and yeah. shit like that so i mean i just love wrestling man like to this day but i kind of shied away from it um you know just i ain't had time to watch it nigga was I just think. so busy and shit and um i think a year or two ago i kind of tapped back in and it was like the bloodline story Got you know what i mean with roman reigns and everything it was just like bro wrestling five bro like yeah. why did i stop watching like you know what i'm saying so i missed the whole john cena error but mm -hmm. like Got attitude you. error from Shawn michaels uh, Stone Cold, DX, um, bro, like, The Brood, yeah. you feel what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, that was my shit, you know yeah, what I'm saying? for sure, and I think, you know, just as an adult, sometimes, sometimes, like, you know, just as you find in yourself, sometimes you do stop doing certain yeah, shit facts. for no particular reason, facts. but it's always, like, a, you know, nostalgic feeling when you get back to it, facts. so I get it. Facts, I feel like I'm I'm back connected with, like, me. Exactly. Like, I, I'm doing things that I love, exactly. like, I just attended Bad Blood, um, yep. I went to uh, WrestleMania this year too. Hell yeah! And um, I got to see The Rock like for the yeah. first time in two. Like, like I got to see him at WrestleMania, and he came back at Bad Blood. Crazy. So it's like, bro, like, bro, just think about the like me as a child. Like I used to glorify of like course. The Rock and Triple H and shit like that. So being able to see them, like I'm still geek like a child. Like I'm yeah. like when 
the music came on, I, man, I jumped up. Like, <laughs> nigga, this the rock, bro. Like, sure. you know what I'm saying? So I love wrestling, man, for real. That's tight. Um, how was it seeing Sexy Red perform at the uh, WWE show? Man, um, so no, she didn't perform that. Uh, she didn't perform. Um, I saw, uh, I saw, what was that girl that sung? Um, she sang, what's it? Coco Jones. Oh. She, she performed at uh, WrestleMania. Got you, okay. She sang the national anthem. Oh, dope. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Sexy Red was at NXT. I wish I would have went. I wish I would have went to that. I went okay. to NXT this summer, um, okay. but I didn't get to see Sexy, but. I would love to go. I think that's tight how man, they just man. I love it. Blending the cultures because I it, love it. Go together, and I think you know, just I think it was a stigma for some time. Like you know, wrestling was like for white people and just certain yeah, shit. Fact. But I'm like, ah, niggas love wrestling too. Yeah, in fact. <laughs> I mean, I feel like man, because I had um, I had a comment made to me like in my DM, like man, why are you watching this fake ass shit? It's mm -hmm. like, bro, okay, this is what I want to tell people. I feel like wrestling is like. Um, it's like theater. It's mm -hmm. like theater with a little bit of action in it too, as Type well. Shit. Like you gotta fall in love with the storyline, bro. Like if it's no storyline, like as you can see, if you just watching like a match, you don't know who both of these motherfuckers are. You not gonna fall in love with that match. But if it's a storyline with a build up that you know what I'm saying for months, mm -hmm. like the bloodline story, yeah, it's no way a nigga can get can call that whack. Right. Like the bloodline story go all the way back. Like you know what I'm saying, and you gotta you gotta watch that. I think. The Bloodline start, story started in, like, 2020. You know what I'm saying? And then Roman Reigns been the champ. He he was the champion for, like, I think four years or some mm -hmm. shit like that. Five years, like, something crazy. But, like, um, even now, it's still going. That's why The Rock is back. You feel what I'm saying? So you got to fall in love with the story. It's People be saying it's fake and shit, but it's like, man, you got to fall in love with the story. Oh, that makes sense. You know I think saying? anybody that watches, you know, wrestling and shit, they know that. Yeah, facts. So, facts, facts, facts. Um, I want to get into celebrity lookalikes. Okay. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> who's some people that, you know, who's some celebs that people said you look like? Man, motherfuckers said I look like Lloyd and shit sometimes. Like, especially when I don't have my hair braided. Motherfuckers say, like, you know, because I be wearing my hair, like, out and Spies shit. Yeah, yeah, they talking about one nigga, one nigga was like, man, who the fuck you think you is? A Rico Iglesias nigga? Because the way I was wearing my hair, I'm like, bro, like, bro, I, can, weak. I can't, I can't help that my hair is, like, how it is. But nah, they say, um, Lloyd a lot. Um... And shit, that's that's really it. That's mainly who I get, Lloyd mm -hmm. and shit. Have you met Lloyd? I haven't. I have. He from New Orleans too, though. I think. Oh, I really? think. I think he from New Orleans. I okay. think he moved up here too. Like kind of same story in a sense. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, facts. I like Lloyd, man. I, I fuck with Lloyd too. I do too, and I love the fact that he's so family oriented. Facts. You know, it's it's facts. just the character for me. Facts. So I, it's crazy. I feel like y'all should meet, and I feel like man, I would love got a similar. Order. Man, I would love to meet uh Lloyd, man. Hell like, yeah. and then I'd be on his Instagram, like he likes super positive too. And that's what I'm saying. I like, feel like y'all probably positive. would mesh extremely well. And it's crazy to tell Facts. Like. Facts. <laughs> that's crazy. That's, yeah, that's, that's gonna crazy. happen. Yeah, facts, facts, facts. Um, so I want to talk about the importance of traveling and what's mm. been like your favorite places so far. Mm. So I've been traveling since I was a little kid. Like my grandma, um, my grandma and my aunties and stuff, they took us to uh, Europe. Like so, like that was my first international trip. Um, I, I think we were in London. We went to Venice. We went to Paris. Um, and we went somewhere else. But um, I think we went to Rome too or something. I don't know. Uh, but uh, the crazy part about it is my grandma, she used to make us write like book reports and shit mm -hmm. of the places that we'll go. So Got like you. we'll get there and then we'll all gather as a family and like people will have to read like Got about you. where we're at. So That's like, hard. yeah, and it kind of just gave gave me like the like like the understanding like as a child that like, bro, like a lot of people don't do this. So I need to like take heed like and learn. But um, to answer your question, some of the favorite places I've been um shit i went to uh where i went this year i had went to well oh, i went to milan this year oh, um mm. last for yeah, february i went to milan my favorite place i went was ghana though i ain't gonna lie yeah, ghana man. ghana was ghana was great nico mm. took us out to ghana nice and um all of the radio stations was fucking with us That's down crazy. there i got to perform at mood bar okay uh down there um and it's crazy because the song pop that popped off was like off of instagram like mm. Off of Instagram ads and shit like that. Motherfuckers, wow. like, did a whole international, like, dance challenge to uh, the song That's Goody fire. Mob. Yeah, so I feel like doing that and receiving the love over there mm -hmm. and just, just also seeing, like, our people in it, in its purest form. Yep. Um, like, man, they don't have what we have over here, but they was all happy and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, 100%. We take a lot of shit for granted over we here. We do. So I feel like that trip kind of humbled me. And it also, mm. like, made me appreciate, like, damn, like, 
what I have, you know what I'm saying, too, as well. 100%, man. I think, you know, it's important for everybody to travel. I feel like traveling, Thanks. like, just especially abroad, just changes Thanks. your life and your perspective. Thanks. And especially going to World War, you know, three countries as well, too, mm-hmm. just seeing how it don't seem like they have, you know, much, but mm-hmm. they are so yeah, happy, facts. content, and facts. peaceful. And it's just, it's, it, like you said, it just it just teaches you to be more grateful. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, we, we got a lot of shit over here, man. Like, the clothes that we freedom, wear and just freedom just, and just, you know what I'm saying? Like, like we have we have roads that we can, exactly. like, that's all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, over there, a lot of their roads aren't, like, you know what I'm saying, together. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, it's a lot of things that we take for granted over here. Hell yeah, I agree 100%. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Um, so, you know, our key word here is progress. progress. Um, and I ask everybody, you know, what does our key word progress mean? So what does our key word progress mean to you? Um, forward progression. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to just trying to continue to just progress. Like even when life hits us and tries to knock us down, just continue to, to stick to your journey. You know what I'm saying? And try to, you know, try to just keep on leveling up every year and i know that's what i've been trying to do you know what i'm saying hopefully people see that but for sure um that's what i've been trying to do for sure 100 percent, man and you know i love what you're doing i think Thank you. it's it's genius and like you said just when you got access to certain contacts mm-hmm. i do believe that you should do something with it mm-hmm. so i'm here for it man definitely, definitely um you know so where can people connect with you at on social media um just call me Vito. Um, that's on Instagram. That's on Twitter, and I think that's on. I think that's on TikTok too. Okay. I, no, TikTok is uh, just call me Vito twenty twenty. I think or twenty twenty four. One one of those shits. Somebody took the twenty twenty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Twenty twenty. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. But yeah, you can you can connect with me. You know what I'm saying through all of that. Um, also vibing with Vito the platform. Yeah. Y'all trying to get interviews. Y'all just trying to come and promote y'all shit. Like you know what I'm saying. I get it. Let's let's work. For sure, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you, man. What's next? Man, um, shit hit different. Like, I'm dropping a project. Okay. It's uh, catered around wrestling, too, as well. Okay. Um, that's dropping in February. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, Sauce Lord Rich, he produced, like, all of the songs on there. Dope. I do got, like, a couple of bonus records with Busy, a Busy Maid. Um, I don't really have no features on that right now. I think Belly Gang, um, Be- Belly Gang Cushington. I think uh we we getting ready to do a do a record. I think that'll probably be like my only feature on there. But other okay. than that, if if that record does come about, you know, niggas be busy and shit, but hopefully sure. that does. But if not, it it'll just be all me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And I don't know. I like sometimes I'll be thinking about hanging this shit up, man, like on the on the on the music side and just I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this is my last one, but mm. I don't know. I just I I kinda feel like um where I'm where I'm going, mm-hmm. um, just in life. Uh, I just want my voice to kind of, kind of like speak, speak for me. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like having a platform where I can kind of like voice my opinion, connect with different people. I feel like that's all I ever really wanted. I just mm-hmm. wanted to be around like like-minded individuals, and you know what I'm saying. So like the music was a stepping stone. So I don't know. I don't want to say that this is my last project, but you know, who knows? I think you know, um, you know, if we, even if we look at like a Jay Z. Or even if we look at a Scotty ATL, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I think, you know, how you feel is super valid. And Mm -hmm. I think um, just sometimes things are just in seasons. So I feel like, you know, even if you do be like, you know, I want to take a little break. Who's to say, you know, in two years, it might be a different shift. You know what I mean? And then you might get back into it. So I think as a creative person, creative person, I think Mm -hmm. um, you valid to feel however you feel. Yeah, And I think, you know, what you're doing is a great thing and a beautiful thing. So I feel like you know, follow that. Cause if it feel right, you gotta do it. Yeah, and that's where I'm at. And thank you for that. Um, That's where I'm at right now. I feel like um, I get complete joy. I feel you. Um, When I go to work on Sundays and do interviews, you know 100%. what I'm saying? I get complete joy. And it's like, um, I've been doing like the music for so long and it's always been kind of like, um, like pulling teeth like you know what i'm saying like when it when it comes down to like arguing with, with people like and that's not that's not my energy bro like that's not my energy i feel like i've gotten into it with niggas in the music and you know what i'm saying and like more it. than like with the podcast like Trust it's like me, literally, it. like bro and I, I just bro i'm i'm at a point in my life where it's just like bro i just want to i just want to have peace man that's mm-hmm. what i've been trying to find my whole life like trust me like, i get it and can I, can I, can I keep going? Like, okay. Like being 17, bro. And having your best friend murdered, yeah. bro. You get what I'm saying? Like having yeah, your yeah. best friend murdered and just like not knowing about therapy, not having people to talk to. And then just 
man, just back to back shit happen. All your friends go to prison. You know what I'm saying? These are the people that's been investing in you to do the music and they rooting for you to do the music. Then I got to do biz basically on the outside with niggas in, on the inside. Yep. And it's like, bro, like, man, my life, I've been just being pulled in different directions when I've been doing this music shit. And it was like, bro, at the end of the day, I loved it, but I was doing it because my partner went to jail. Like I was, I was rapping because he went to jail. Type he two. was the, he was the star. I wasn't, nigga. I was, I was riding with you, with you, mm -hmm. whatever you wanted to do. So he went to jail. You know what I'm saying? We, I get we, it. we was popular in high school. I was like, I right, bet I want to really like, you know what I'm saying? Do this for my friend. Like I had, I had, I had a a motive behind it. 100%. Like I want to be successful because my niggas are going to jail for 15, 10, 15 years. Yep. I want to have something for them when they come home. It was never like a. This all I gotta do, like all I can do. Like I was playing basketball in school too. Okay. I was good academically in school too. Got I could have went to college and just, you know what I'm saying? Like my uncle is Stan Verrett. Like he's on ESPN. Got you. Like, so I was I was looking at him on some journalism, like journalist type shit, like before. You know what I'm saying? All of those plans went to the wayside when shit happened on this end. And I was like, man, I just I went down like a spiral in a sense, like just like bro, being places I ain't need to need to be at, beefing with niggas, getting shot at, fighting, and and then then trying to just rap and doing all like bro, like bro, I don't got to do all that shit for real. Like I'm a smart guy, like I'm a cool guy, like you Absolutely. know what I'm saying. And I I I now like being in my thirties, bro. I just want to live a good life. You know what I'm saying? I just want to live a good life. You know what I'm saying? So I feel you 100. percent That's why I'm happy for you because I know. You know, everybody's situation and circumstance is different. Thanks. But I feel like, you know, what you're saying is it, it makes sense. It's like, you know, a lot of stuff happened, which, tra you know, transpired you to do music. But I feel like now just finding your peace and your calling and this mm -hmm. is such a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, it's it's just rare to it happen for people like that. So Thanks. you, you got to just take heed to Thanks. that. And with the Thanks. music stuff, Thanks. I feel like it's going to always be there. It's, it's going to always be there. Studio. It's going to always be there. And I feel yeah. like, man, people be getting mad at me about that shit. I man. get it. And but it's, it's like, life, this is my life, yeah. though. It's like, and people don't understand that. Like, nigga, this is my life. Yep. Like, if I feel like dropping a song today, like, I drop a song. And I know I'm talented. I can always do that. Exactly. But it's just like, bro, I'm kind of like, okay, la la, being real. Like, I'm kind of like, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a place in my life right now where I feel like, man, damn, like, what the fuck? I'm, you know, am I going to do, quit this shit or am I going to keep on going? So uh, I ain't going to talk your head off, but oh, like, yeah. right now, I'm just trying to, like, I'm trying to, make my next move my best move and i 100%. feel my podcast is going great i know this project that i'm about to drop is great 100%. and um i just want complete happiness man and that's really it i just want to be happy bro trust me i get it man and you deserve 100 percent happiness and 100 percent peace facts so you just got to do what feel right to you facts. and the outside noise is just that facts facts, you know what I'm facts. Saying? so mm -hmm. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. So, uh, yes, just call me Vito, man. I appreciate you for blessing our platform. Man, thank just you. Thank you for being you. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. I feel like I uh, I want a Grammy coming up here. Hey, that's real right. shit. Like, cause I always look at y'all. <laughs> that's what's look up. Look at your platform, and it's like that's tight. Like, I want to sit in front of the red light. Nah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? I can't wait to sign it too. Perfect like, timing. Yep. Yeah, facts. Facts. Perfect facts. timing. Thank you. Perfect though. timing. Thank you. The Progress Report.